Last time we took control of the horizontal. Now let's take control of the vertical. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. On the last video, we built a circuit to generate the horizontal timing of the NTSC RS170A compatible composite video. Today, we'll add in the vertical timing so that we can generate a full sync signal. Before we begin, I received some feedback on the previous video, so let's talk about that. To clarify, this series is about generating North American RS170A composite video, not other standards like PAL. Also, there is an error in the previous video. When generating horizontal reset, I did the math on screen and came to 910. The count should be 909, as indicated in the video, at 7 minutes and 55 seconds or so, where I said I made a mistake and fixed it. The original was actually the correct one, and the correction was wrong. My original math was good, but I had some breadboard noise, causing issues that led me to second-guess my math. I resolved it by putting the counter back on 909 and adding the 14 MHz clock to the NAND. This ensures that the frequency is always right. Now let's get back to it. Here's what you'll need for today's circuit. The horizontal circuit from the last video, a 5 volt power supply, another 74HC 4040 12-bit counter, a 74LS20 dual unit quad input NAND chip, a 74LS02 quad unit dual input NOR chip, a 74HC86 quad unit dual input XOR chip, another solderless breadboard, and connecting wires. If you want to test your output, you'll also need a 1000 ohm resistor, a standard RCA jack with soldered leads, an RCA cable, and an NTSC TV or RS170A composite monitor. Now that we can synchronize lines, let's get to synchronizing full frames with vertical timing signals. These are vertical reset, which paces all vertical timing, vertical blank, a signal used by other signals, vertical sync, which tells the TV to put the electron beam back to the top left, and composite sync, the combination of both horizontal sync and vertical sync. Keep in mind that the vertical signals are not as timing critical as horizontal. Generally close is good enough. Let's start with vertical reset. This is the signal that paces all vertical timing. Remembering from the last episode, a normal field is 262.5 lines long, with two fields combined into a single frame to give interlaced video. We also remember that counting halves in binary is weird. So let's cheat and generate 263 lines. The TV won't care about this, actually. What it will do is give us successive non-interlaced fields. This is a trick called fake progressive that many classic systems used. This doubles our frame rate to 60 and halves our vertical resolution. This also makes generation of video by an 8-bit system simpler. Easier binary math during programming and fewer edge cases to deal with. The signal we need to count is H reset, essentially counting sequential lines. To make 263, we need to count to 263 because H reset happens at the end of each line. To do that, we feed 256, 4, 2, and 1 into a 74LS20 NAND. We invert that with the 74LS04 that we already used and bring the result into the clear line of the counter. This gives us V reset. So let's build it. Let's get the second breadboard hooked up to power, and then we'll get everything turned on. Now we'll install the 74HC4040 counter and power it up. And we'll follow that up with the 74LS20 NAND chip. Now let's hook up 256, 4, 2, and 1. That gives us 263V. Now we take that into the inverter and get V reset. Then we bring V reset into the clear line of the counter. And finally, we pull H reset into the clock line of the counter. If we look at the scope, we see we get a period of 59.8258 Hz. Let's do the math and see if that's right. 59.8258 Hz is a period of 16,715.2 microseconds. 
If we divide that by 263 lines, we get 63.556 microseconds. Considering rounding, measurement errors, and propagation delay, that qualifies as close enough. Now, let's build vertical blank. Vertical blank is a fairly long period that allows time for the electron gun to settle back into place at the end of the frame. We will be using it as a reference to generate other signals. Although the standard gives the period as the first 21 lines, its length isn't critical. It just needs to be synchronized to the beginning of the frame, and it can't end before the signals it is helping to generate. To keep things simple, we start vblank at 0 and run it until 16. A 74LS02 quad NOR gate is used as a NOR-based SR flip-flop, with V reset being the set condition and 16 being the reset. This gives us V blank and not V blank. Now why do we use a NOR instead of a NAND? A NAND SR flip-flop requires negative inputs, but a NOR SR takes positive ones. Since V reset and 16 are positive true, it's easier to use a NOR. So let's build it. We start by putting the 74LS02 NOR chip on the board and powering it up. Then we cross-connect the gates. Now we pull in V reset for the set condition and 16V for the reset condition. Let's look at the output on the oscilloscope. And now, vertical sync. This signal tells the TV to move the electron beam back to the top left corner. According to spec, it is a negative pulse of three lines starting at 3V and ending at 6V. But we can cheat a little bit. As long as V-sync is a couple of lines long, always starts at the same time as H-sync, and ends on or before 9V, it will work. We make V-sync by first inverting 8V with the 74LS04 we already have in order to make not 8V. Then we bring V blank, not 8V, and 4V into a 74LS10. This will generate a V-sync pulse of four lines between 4V and 8V. This is close enough to sync to any television. So let's build it. Ignore that chip on the right for now. I got ahead of myself. We pull 8V into the inverter and bring not 8V into the 74LS10 NAND. Then we bring in 4V and finally, V blank. Let's take a look at the output on the oscilloscope. And finally, composite sync. Composite sync is the unification of the horizontal sync and vertical sync signals. But it's not so straightforward. Bear with me while we go down the rabbit hole for a minute. A standard C-sync combines the signals in a way to keep vertical sync while also keeping horizontal sync. In addition, the signals are modified to help the TV create interlaced video. The resulting pulses are called equalization and serration pulses. This period is separated into three equal periods of three lines each. Starting at 0V, the first three lines are equalization, the second three are serration, and the final three are equalization again. The kicker, though, is that the vast majority of televisions and monitors do not require these signals to be accurate or even present when we're generating progressive video. We're still going to generate a modicum of these signals, but we're not going to worry about it too much. So how do we do this cheat? We use an XOR gate. Think of an XOR gate as a selectable inverter. Designate in your mind one of the inputs as a control line and the other input as a signal to be modified. If the control line is low, the signal input will be output unchanged. If the control line is high, the signal input will be inverted on the output. Using this analogy, think of not V-Sync as the control line and H-Sync as the signal line. We make C-Sync by pulling H-Sync and not V-Sync into a 74HC86 XOR gate. I'm using a 74LS86 since I have it already, but they have been discontinued. This gives our final composite sync signal. So let's build it. I already installed the 74HC86 chip. We just need to bring in H-Sync and not V-Sync. That's all there is to it. Let's look at the output on the oscilloscope. Now it's time to test it. All we need to do is hook up a 1000 ohm resistor and an RCA jack. Hook it up to the TV 
and watch the white screen turn black. In two quick steps, we've made a proper NTSC RS-170A sync signal from nothing but logic chips. Next time, we'll build a pixel generator and create proper color video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can also support the museum through Patreon or by snagging some merch. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos. And remember, 8 bits are all you need.